Hey, yeah. Des. Hey, how's it going? Nice to be here. Yeah, nice Flushing to have band, you. the Ramones. You like them? Oh, yeah, but he's from Flushing originally. But it was before my time, to be honest. Before, I mean, I'm... No, not before my. I guess I was a kid when they were really popular, but I never really listened to them. I, I, I discovered them because I hooked up with some girl who was, like, into them. And then I, me and her didn't work out, but I wound up loving the Ramones. Wow. Yeah. So she got well, me into the Ramones. The I positive just, benefits of a bad relationship. I yeah. just wear the t-shirts because I think it's cool. They are cool. Yeah. They make you look really, really edgy and dark. Right, that's what I thought. People are like, oh, you like punk? I'm like, yeah, that's just me, a punker. Yeah. A there, former New York. Any bands you were a fan of as a kid that you loved that just didn't age well and you just can't listen to it anymore? Poison? Yeah. I didn't really love Poison, though. Village people, but I can still enjoy it. <laughs> I can still enjoy the village people. There were some 80s metal bands that I loved, and I just I can't figure out why now as an adult. And I found an appreciation for the bands that came before my bands, like Hendrix and the Stones and the Doors, who were way before my time. And the 80s metal bands that I liked. I, I went just... through what a lot of people my age went through, and which was Olympus Biscuit phase. Yeah. At no point in my life today would I listen to Olympus Biscuit song, but at the time... I was like, yeah, this is fucking dope. It wasn't. I forget that you were born here. I because you are you so I think yeah, of you as an Irish guy. You think of me as an Irish guy. An Irish guy, it's very yeah. Confusing, I know. You don't live there now, do you? No, no, I'm living in New York. Living in the Lower East Side. Okay. You know? Why'd you move back? Oh, something new, something fresh. Oh, you got sick of it? No, it's just you know, my parents. You know, my mother was getting ill. You know, it was just like a it was like a life decision. It wasn't like it wasn't any specific thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's fun to be back here doing it, uh, doing it in America. So it's really just like a life challenge. More Were you popular more. there? Oh yeah, I'm pretty, you know, pretty you successful in, in Ireland. Yeah, because I did. You Dublin. can drop the name. Yeah, I, I, I could. I would. I wouldn't do. I would felt bad. I, I did Dublin. It was fun. I, I like. I really enjoyed being. That was there. recently, right? Yeah, but it was nice. The people were. The weather sucked, but it was like it was nice to go. That's the Irish experience. The weather sucked, but we had a great time. You they did leave it. the fucking <laughs> doors open there. Every every store you go into, the fucking doors are open. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? Why wouldn't you they mean be? you were freezing? No, the doors were open. Yeah, it was crazy. You're sitting there having coffee in a shop. I, a friend of mine lives there. And I'm like, why do you people leave your doors open? And she's like, what are you talking about? And now she texted me. She's like, I the can't Aussie unsee the... it. Yeah, whatever she was. <laughs> yeah, that, I, that's I, anybody I, in Europe. I've never <laughs> noticed that. She did, and now she can't unsee it. She's like, every place has the doors open. I never noticed it. It's huh. very energy inefficient. Yeah, it's yeah. unacceptable. I will say that when I moved to Ireland, I was 19, 19 14 years old. And I loved it because it was new and exciting. Then I came back to New York for Christmas, 90 into 91. And when I went back, one of the things I really remember was I was so homesick because it was cold and wet. I hadn't noticed it the first time, but after coming back to like proper heating in New York, when I went back, I was like, oh my God, I'm cold and wet all the time. So I guess I was experiencing that. Maybe. What you were huh. experiencing. Yeah, I, I liked it, but I, I definitely could not live there. Maybe I should go over the summer. No, it's literally the worst possible weather. You, like you breathe in and you have bronchitis for three weeks. That's it. Oh, it sucks. Oh, it's terrible. It's very damp. It's very moist. Is there a big local comedy scene there? It's small. But yeah. it's it's success. they they punch above their weight the Irish so the comedy scene is small but it's only an hour flight to London so mm. it's really kind uh, of yeah. it's really kind of part of it's in addition to the UK comedy scene a lot of people make the mistake of going there and saying it's great to be in the UK and then you you've lost the crowd for <laughs> for your entire show even if they've waited like like Chris Rock made the mistake once of talking about Ricky Hatton the boxer and then sort of saying you guys along with Ricky Hatton. So he wasn't even saying the UK. He just made the mistake of including Ricky Hatton in the, the sort of Irish. Uh, sure. Like, and uh, they, they kind of turned on him for the rest of the show. And they, it was in a tiny venue. They waited like eight months to see him. And then they were just like, no, nah, I'm sorry. You should have known that Ricky Hatton and us have nothing in common. What's well, Irish pride before everything, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah. you know, it's just, in, you know, the, you can't say the UK. They go nuts. Or even if you say the British Isles, because, you know, when we were educated, like uh, growing up here, you're taught that Ireland is part of the British Isles, quote unquote. The Irish don't like that. How, now who's the fuck? I watched those bare knuckle fighters. I mean, might have talked about this last time. Who are those guys? Like, they're travelers. Joe, the travelers, yes. Yeah, are they're they gypsies. gypsies? They are. They're Irish gypsies, yeah. So what, are they frowned on in Ireland? Well, the Irish, the travelers are like, the, they're very discriminated against. Colin Quinn's obsessed with them. With the travelers? Yeah, like he'll tweet videos. He'll say something about you know you know something I I did this yesterday and this is some shitty travelers video. Two guys under cloudy skies, fucking bare knuckle fighting in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I, I actually did a, I did a like a, a documentary series about doing stand up comedy workshops in bad areas. So I did one. I lived with them for a month. The travelers, the, the, the travel yeah, and Chum uh, T U A M, but they say Chum like a C H Chum. I thought uh, they were uh, kind but, of like they didn't let anybody on the outside in. Well, I mean, you know, they do if they can. No, I mean, in, the, these guys are settled travelers, so they live in, in houses, but they all live amongst them, you know, each other. And uh, I mean, they were great. I mean, they're great fun. But they have, you know, there's like all 
marginalized, disadvantaged groups, they have uh, some social problems. Did they drink? They drink a lot. They get violent when they drink. They're they're sort of feudal, so they have a lot of uh, feuds. You know, they, they like they're kind of tribal, I should say. So they have a lot of feuds. Right. And when families turn against each other, it can be quite bloody and violent. But not so much with guns, but with like uh, axes and machetes and stuff like that. Wow! Oh wow! Uh, and there was a group of travelers that got exposed here in the United States. That's right in the south. This massive fucking scam where there was this whole backstory how the women. We're looking for men online who had just uh, become widows, and they'd move in with these old guys and say, oh, my, my brother is down on his luck. Can we get him to move in? And it would be their boyfriend, and they'd be fucking their boyfriend in the same house with an old guy living upstairs and just waiting for the old guy to die while they take over. But the, they didn't kill him. They didn't kill him. They would just wait for the guy to die. They would work their way into his life and then get in the will and then get the get the houses. Pretty but, smart. And that bit of patience, requ- that that deserves respect. You've but, earned yeah. it. If you're fucking yeah. someone in their 80s, you did have to fuck the husband too. But the whole ring got exposed in this massive, huge scam they were about to pull off on Disney. They went to the Disneyland Hotel in Anaheim and staged... A rape in the Disneyland hotel. They busted the door of this hotel room and they actually beat up one of the girls, like one of their own, and came on her. And and then, but left. you had to fight off the volunteers for that game. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it was part of it, sure. And she calls the front desk. But weren't they real, worried that like they'd find like the guy's DNA? In the jizz, and then that guy. She is now- calls the front desk and says, "I, you know, my front door was kicked in. I've just been gang raped, and uh, and then they investigate, and and they go, man, we're, you know, and then they start this lawsuit against Disney, and it goes on for a couple of years, and they're about to settle for a huge amount of money with Disney, and there was some infighting amongst the women in the travelers uh. group." about how to split the money, and one of them said, if you don't give me this much, I'm exposing the whole thing. And she did. Wow. She ruined it for everyone. They were just about to settle for Uh. tens of millions of dollars with Disney, and she fucking exposed Do you think they hate her? I always wonder what happened to, the, to that girl and that. But yeah, I remember. I wouldn't want to think about it too much because statistics would show it didn't end well for her. Really? Mm. Yeah, there's, yeah, no there's way. a lot of problems within that community. And I, I stick up for them all the time, but there is a lot of instances of I, domestic you abuse. You stick up for them all the time? <laughs> well, because the Irish are really tough on them, but I didn't grow up with it. You how, know did you, how did, you, how did you, you stay with them? They treated you well? They treated me great. They took me lamp and rabbits. So you What's go that? out and oh. you go out with flashlights in the middle of the night and the flashlights uh, scare the rabbits. The rabbits start running and the, the whippets, the great, you know, you know what a whippet is? Like no. a kind of mini greyhound. The whippet goes and kills the rabbit. And they eat it. But we, yeah, we ate it. I so why did the Irish, with them? You see, oh, the Irish, absolutely. The Irish give them a hard time. Why? Well, they're, they're hated. I mean, like, because, uh, you, well, you know, the, the people would say that they're just genetically predisposed to violence and they're yeah, just yeah, bad sure. people. Anyway, think of any group that's hated uh, for <laughs> irrational think, reasons. Think of your favorites. And then you'll find the evidence to say these people are like that if you want to find that evidence. And it's just classic racism. I saw one of them, one of those guys in an interview. I, I went on a loop. Colin tweeted some fucking dumb video and I was in a <laughs> traveler's loop. And one of the guys soaks his hands in gas. I'll never forget Why? that. Just toughens your hands, and and I believed him. He was a big fucking the king of the travelers. He might have been. He, he might have been the king of the just travelers. Just a guy who fights a lot. Toughens your nipples. There's a weird. Yeah. That's a real thing. By the way, I fought one of them in a boxing match as part of. You the had sh- gloves. Yeah, I had gloves. Can you though. fight? I mean, I was all right. Okay. I held my own. The kid was the kid was smaller he, than me, so I had nine. an advantage. <laughs> no, no, I, was like, <laughs> I kicked the shit out of that little, little prick. prick. Yeah, we tried to take a loss there; it didn't work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was uh, like seventeen. But anyway, I was a lot taller than him. But we had a good fight. Joe Joyce, it might have been. I don't know if it was Joe jo- Joyce. Jo- well, the, jo- the Joyce is a big traveler name. McDonough is a big traveler name, and the Wards, the people that I were with, were the Wards. So you meet Joe Joyce? I haven't met Joe Joyce. In fact, I didn't meet any Joyces. So are these are these travelers like I? I spent a little bit of time growing up. In England, like I spent four years there, what the fuck? and there was like a gypsy culture where people would just show up in RVs and just park them. And yeah, that's, that's where, the Irish travelers, and that's where they would just live. Yeah, I mean, there are also Romani gypsies, but the right. Romani gypsies are—they just look kind of European. I uh, see. They just look different. Yeah, those, like, those are traditionally what we think of as gypsies, but th- the Irish travelers are the ones you're talking about. There was about. like this pack of like uh, RVs that were literally parked the side of the road. Yeah, they were—they were outside of our school, and they just. Every single day they were just there and everybody just knew don't don't fuck with the gypsies. Don't fuck, don't with, fuck with the gypsies. Yeah. Would they bother you or no? Patties. No. No, as long as you didn't go into their space, and we never did. What do you mean going into this? You couldn't walk by them? No, because we well, we were on the no, bus. No, it's just we'd dangerous. Right by oh, them. yeah. They're, yeah. Why, they're criminals? 
No, they're just they're rough. They're Scrappy. Tough. No, yeah. let me ask you this: Probably jo- defending their territory, right? Like, well, I, you know, I mean, listen, they're, it's a t- they're they're very they're paranoid. <laughs> they are <laughs> right. They are. How are they fun crowd? Did you perform for them? Uh, oh, I perform for them, and four of their own perform for them. You know, they have like a lot <laughs> of the obvious jokes, like you know, the the, 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 one of their favorite jokes is. Uh, so if uh, if you to say uh, can I can I buy this off you and you say yeah and they say well you take a traveler's check <laughs> oh, that's like that's, 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 that's their, their thing that's their kind of thing you yeah. know, they have <laughs> they have their joke this is my wife and also my cousin yeah. by the way there's a lot of inbreeding yeah 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 and, but well, that's I, like a real thing the sure. thing that I saw yeah. I think it was like a Dateline special or a couple of Dateline specials and one of them showed that they would uh, do these pageants where they would show off their youngest females and their families to be uh, traded for marriage. And the girls were like 10, 11 yeah, I mean, years old. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. And you know, there's a series on Channel 4 in the UK called My Big Fat Gypsy Wedding, which is actually all about uh, Irish traveler weddings. They have that, uh, they have Big Fat Gypsy Wedding here. Oh, they do? But it's not like gypsy is as, as, as like in the European sense. It's yeah. more just like this like, I think like little Romanian cultural, like it's it's oh, American right, yeah. gypsies, which are not a thing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, know? no. And in, in in the UK, it's mostly the Irish travelers, my big fat gypsy wedding, and you know they're like Holy Communion, like the first Holy Communion for the travelers is like unbelievable. Horse drawn carriages, really? kids are all dolled up. They spend, and it's funny because they're all on social welfare, but then people say they're on social welfare, but they spend so much money on their communion dresses. There's all sorts of. Wow. So they they uh they're, yeah they're poor. Well, they're poor. Quote unquote, they're poor. Yeah. But and you watch them fight bare knuckle. Do they wear mouth guards? Uh, do they fight bare knuckle? I don't think so. Wow. I've never seen a live bare knuckle fight. I've seen them the same as you have on YouTube. Oh, okay. You step into this middle of this floor, and they have their own voice. Like you can tell a traveler from their accent. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But no you... matter what part of Ireland they're from, they have a traveler accent. So it does. It's, it's almost like when people do the stereotypical gay voice. It doesn't matter if you're northern or southern. It's high. Like it doesn't. It, yeah. It transcends. I mean, actually, one of the. <laughs> Coincidentally enough, one of the travelers that did our series was gay, but he wasn't camp. How, right. how, did, how did his people handle that? Well, I don't know, because he came out afterwards. But there was a lot of rumors that he was gay, but he came out afterwards. Could so he I, fight? I, I bet he could really fight. No, I don't think he could fight, but he, he had other skills, uh, manipulation <laughs> skills. Oh, I understand. Uh, yeah. beyond, beyond, beyond his, uh, beyond his so, knuckles. When you say, <laughs> just beyond. When you say they're uh, quote-unquote poor, is that because... On the books, they're poor, but they know they have. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff where guys on social welfare get caught, like having loads of money, and you know, right. a lot of them are into antiques. I mean, they have they have certain things that they're good at. You know, they're good at selling antiques, and how they get come about getting them is the the problem. But anyway, listen, I had I known, I would have done a little bit more research on the uh, the socioeconomic. <laughs> it just looks That's... chilly. They're fucking fighting. Everyone else oh, has their they... fucking hands in their pockets oh, and, that, and wearing that, that, jackets. That's Ballymun. <clears throat> That's Ballymun. That's on the outskirts of Dublin where they're fighting. So actually, I've met a few of these travelers. They're probably Joyce's. In fact, years ago, I was doing, uh, I was doing, uh, I was running workshops in Irish prisons for addicts, and uh, I used to do a oh, thing. Oh, you're at, sober, right? Yeah, I okay. used to do a thing every Wednesday, and uh, one of these travelers would, used to come in every Wednesday. His last name was Joyce. I can't remember his first name, but uh, he was in. He got caught robbing nappies. Which, oh, sorry, diapers. He got caught in the in the diaper warehouse, robbing diapers, hmm. and uh, so he was doing like five years for robbing for diapers. Yeah, the, the Irish people call them nappies, you know. Wow. So are the but, travelers in Ireland are they similar to the Irish travelers in the Appalachians, where they have like crime, like uh, syndicates, or they're they're all like yeah, part I believe of, that's the same they, breed. They run they run scams, and the guys do uh, the guys were doing like. Uh, Repair work. They would travel yeah, that's them. Uh, that's for a that. couple days, a hundred miles or two hundred miles in any random direction, and just show up in the neighborhoods and go, "Hey, we can f- we notice you got a thing in your house," and then they would pretend to work on the house while they stole everything out of the house, and then drive a couple hundred miles back home. Yeah, yeah, that's them. Uh, there, there's Irish travelers in the south. I know that. I know yeah. they've they've gotten caught for various things, and I think one of there was one ki- horrible kid thing that went down with the Irish travelers years ago. I can't remember, but it, the news in Ireland was that Irish travelers are getting up to no good in the south of America. Mm. I don't think they thrive here in uh, in New York. All these communities got to have their scams to make money. I, I, I went and visited the Amish at one point in like, you know, whatever, central Pennsylvania or whatever. And they give you the, the horse and buggy tours. But the thing must have stopped like five or six times with different Amish kids being like, oh, and we're going to stop right here. And you can buy some lemonade and cookies. Or we're going to stop right here and you can buy yeah. this. But that's we're going to stop right here and you can buy this. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, but the Exit, Amish aren't punching each other in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Exit through the gift shop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was exactly. on a flight with a Mennonite recently. A Mennonite girl was sitting next to me on the flight to uh, Calgary. Well, and but th- th- those are, uh, I know my friend Raymond, the Amish comic, he's actually he's a funny Amish comedian. And he would talk about the Mennonites. What's the difference between them and the Amish? They hate each other? 
No, they don't hate each other. There's all different sects of this Germanic tribe that came over 400 years ago. Some of them are more, you know, more modern than others. I mean, her one was, uh, they used the internet only for commerce. She never watched TV, which is funny because there was a TV screen right in front of her on the plane. And she, she, wouldn't, just, she wouldn't use it. Yeah, she wouldn't use it, but she, she no flies interest. to Calgary. She flies to Calgary to see her boyfriend who's teaching in a Mennonite school in Calgary. But so, so she used an airplane, but not a television. Yeah, it's, it, but you know, it's all just whatever. But she, she, she was very upset when I told her I didn't believe in Jesus. Oh, really? She didn't give me a hard time, but she was very upset. She couldn't believe it. And then she couldn't believe I wasn't married. Are you, are you, have you ever been married? No, I was engaged. What happened? Uh, long story. Okay. <laughs> did you dump What's her or did she dump you? Uh, well, she dumped me, but I guess she had no choice. <laughs> oh, no. I was the bad guy in the picture. What did you, you do? Are? Did you cheat? I don't, you know, I've never talked about it publicly, so I'm not going to start talking okay. about it now. Fair because, enough. you know, like in Ireland, I would, you know, it would just be better if I didn't talk about it publicly. Okay. I love sure. Jimmy's stories, like, about cheating and how fucking honest. Yeah, but he made a career out of it. Yeah. 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 True. yeah. The I made a career out of keep my fucking mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's probably the smarter way to do it. That is probably the better way to do it. Yeah. Um, okay, so you were engaged, and now are you dating now or no? Do you just date currently? Casually? Currently, no. But okay. I know if I, you know, I, I, I was, I think the the last time I was on with you was a previous incarnation of your show, and we, I think we did talk about that I was with a Chinese girl, but I, I, I was with a Chinese girl quite seriously, but it didn't work out. She didn't want to emigrate. Hmm. To here or to oh, Ireland? To here. To here, okay. Yeah, well, I guess. Either, either or. Sure, didn't, sure. She was from China. <laughs> to them, it's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's not China. Yeah. How did you meet someone in China? Were you over there I was doing there, a gig? I was there did, for two years. Did you really? Fuck, I don't remember. You might have told me this and my memory is so yeah, bad. Yeah, but that, that, was a, that was a weird time anyway. But uh, no, I, I did a TV series where I, I lived in China for a year to learn Chinese to do stand-up in Chinese. Did you do it? No, I did it, yeah. How and then I it? stayed another year because I liked it so much. How was I, it? It was great. Doing gig? But that's, a, that's like a, a, an amazing, like you really have to be committed to a TV show to be like, okay, here's the pitch. But You're going to my... live in China for a year. Where yeah. Is, that, well, know? that's a smart guy. I mean, to be able to, to be able, it's specifically Chinese. <laughs> no, no, not that. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> All I said was, what the fuck do you want me to say? <laughs> Where in China did you live? Uh, in Beijing. In Beijing? Yeah. When you... So, uh, yeah, but anyway, just in terms of the pitch, I had yeah. done, I, all the TV shows I've done in Ireland have been these kind of like immersion experiences, like including like the traveler thing. And I did the Irish language. I lived in an Irish speaking area. So the China thing was just an evolution of the What's it called? Of... Is it Gaelic or am I wrong? The Irish yeah, language. Yeah, well, the, the Irish language in, in Irish is actually Gwelga. But somehow, the, like a bastardization of it has become Gaelic. But you know, we, we say Ga people say Gaelic here, so that's fine. So when you do gigs over there, is it, it like in China? No, no, in Ireland. There's uh, you know, there's obviously the IRA with the North, the South, and there's all this. I, I know there's very obviously... <laughs> little about it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, is it? Uh, are you more well received in one area than another? Or they oh, don't... I, I'm I'm way more famous in the the Republic of Ireland, the South, quote unquote. Even though part of the of Southern Ireland is actually more North than Northern Ireland, but I'm I'm quite famous in the 26 counties, and then I'm semi-famous in the north because they watch a lot more British TV because they get all those channels like you know they're just more accustomed to watching English TV but amongst the kind of nationalist community particularly when I did the Irish language thing because they really hold on to the Irish language as part of their Irish sure. identity it's like the Montreal and the French yeah so they they love me because I you know well actually two reasons one I speak Irish and two I'm Irish American and we funded them through the 80s and 90s until they uh, stopped fighting. Okay. So, so uh, I'm a big fan, or, or they're they're big fans of mine. In fact, Jerry Adams and uh, Mary McAleese, the leader. Or, or, sorry, j ignore that that w the name I just said. Uh, the actual name has popped out of my head for a second. But anyway, the leader of Sinn Fein. They're both over here at the moment to raise money for the party. It, Jerry Adams is not in charge anymore. No, he just uh, passed it over. Did you know him? I I've I've interviewed him in in Irish actually. Really? Does yeah, he speak for, English? For, for that series. Yeah, no, no, he speaks English. His English is way better than his Irish, but okay. I interviewed him for, uh, In the Name of the Father was the name of that series. Father is like the Irish accent, so it's like a play on words. It means nothing over here, obviously. People always say that to me. They're like, why don't you just uh, move to America and do your jokes? It's like they haven't a fucking clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I interviewed him for that, but then of course some people loved it, and then some people are like, how can you talk to that murdering bastard? You know? So there's a lot, of, a lot of mixed feelings about Jerry Adams. There are. When you did... What made you start doing so much of the uh, immersion stuff? Like, do you, are you just interested in the other experiences, or are you just like, this is something I the could do The first one happened and... by accident. So the, the first one was a, uh, a series about living a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So I did four minimum wage jobs for a month each. 
and it came to me via. A this pro- is this is not some undercover boss bullshit like they, they where it's just like <laughs> today I'm going to be yeah. a cashier no, no. and you do it for three hours. Well, and- there was a book called Nickel and Dime, the great book by Barbara Ehrenreich, which was a hot book at the time. So she was undercover because she's a print journalist. But we had permission from all the jobs. But anyway, she pitched this idea to me and said, "I'd like you to be the guy." So then when I did that, that was the thing that kind of broke me big in Ireland. So this concept of sort of like immersing yourself in an experience, I guess one, it kind of suited me because I spent my whole life living in other people's lives. So I'm good at being like a chameleon, just fitting in. And uh, two, it's good because it's a, it's a, you can be entertaining, but also informative about difficult situations. Right. But the thing about that series, that was 2003. We filmed it. 2004 was on TV. Ireland literally got immigration for the first time ever. You know, everybody always left Ireland. Now suddenly Ireland had an economy, so people were coming there. So I ended up working with a lot of Chinese and a lot of, uh, like, like Romanians and Eastern Europeans. So it was Ireland's first look at sort of how Irish people treat foreign workers. Because wow. Irish, pe- Irish people were traditionally the people like, oh, in America, they love us. In the UK, they hated us in the 80s because of the IRA. You know, it was always like the immigrant experience. So this was the first... Uh, immigrant experience, so that was part of why it was so successful. And by the way, Des is a really, really funny comedian. I mean, we're talking, <laughs> no, we're talking about this stuff. By the way, he does funny shit. Too. <laughs> no, no, no. But, <laughs> I want to jokes. promote that you're going to be at Caroline's Thursday through Saturday. I, we've worked together a hundred times. The Comedy Cellar. Yes. I've seen you. You're really a great comic. Uh, and it's at Des Bishop, D E S uh, Bishop on uh, Twitter and, and Des Bishop. Dot net on oh, Instagram and desbishop.net is the site. But Caroline's uh, 212-757-4100 this uh, Thursday through Saturday. Uh, so just, for, just to plug that because people... Oh, you thank know, you. you know, Especially because you know we're getting so deep into stuff. You know. <laughs> I have to, have to remind them I'm a comedian. But no, it's interesting because it's so many experiences I have not had. I've just started sure. doing a lot of the traveling. And to immerse yourself, I guess cause I get so attached to things and like I'm doing in gigs to immerse myself anywhere for four months or whatever would freak me out. Yeah, do, yeah. You, do you take a break from stand-up when you're doing stuff like that? Well, no, with the, with the China one, no. I mean, with the China one, I was doing stand-up all the time. I actually right. started my own kind of like gig, English language gig originally. And then when the Chinese thing started kicking off, we ran like a Chinese language stand-up thing. And to be honest, I was so obsessed slash addicted to it that I, I stayed an extra year because it was so much fun to be at literally the the dawn of stand-up in China. Was there anything about Chinese culture that threw you? Threw me? Yeah. I saw some weird shit. I really... I wanted to go to the opening or the, the first few months when the Shanghai Disney... Oh yeah, was open. I wanted to see it because I thought it'd be cool to go to a new park, and and I was I was obsessing over videos. I was just about to buy my plane ticket when I saw this guy who calls himself Disney Dan posted a bunch of videos of his experience at the opening of Disney, and there was one video labeled just a heads up about Disney in Shanghai, and he said, "Hey, just so you know, there's some things that might throw you. First of all, uh, people here don't respect personal space," and he showed. Multiple pictures oh, right. in line where people people's shoes were touching his shoes. They were dick to ass on him in line, physically touching him. And the one line he said that really fucked me up was, and just so you're not shocked when you see this, there are multiple signs all over Shanghai Disney saying, if you have to go to the bathroom, please use the restroom. Yeah, but because that's just kids. Though. That's the kids. Because kids in China, apparently they all wear onesies yeah, they, with the they, butt flap. The butt and flap, it's, they it's just co- drop a deuce. They just drop a deuce. And there's apparently a video of the opening of Disney Shanghai of a kid taking a shit in the middle so, of Main Street, USA. At what age do kids in China stop shitting all over the street? Yeah. When they learn how to use the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't use, they don't use diapers. Yeah, they, they just have a hole in their in and, their stuff. When, and, kids, and when little Chinese kids walk around, there, you can see their ass. And parents will hold the kids over garbage That's cans right. while they shit in public. Yeah, and you gotta say they're not it's shy, pretty good, huh? Pretty good system. <laughs> I was in Starbucks. I was in Starbucks one time in uh, Tiananmen, like right right behind Tiananmen. There's like a little like like tourist street, and uh, this little kid just fucking pissed like right next to us, and the pee just like rolled down by our feet oh. in Starbucks. In the outside part of Starbucks, this is not a good system. Yeah, when you the, the hole in the floor that you got to shit into. My my thing is oh, how much I, stuff you, gets you dropped by wallets. That. You, you love you, it. You learn to love that. Why? Because you don't have to fucking sit on the toilet. No, but you're because also... they're so disgusting uh. that you're just no matter how this, how dirty they are, you're just you're just crouching. Yeah, that's actually that. You kidding me? That's a premier toilet in China. But don't you drop your fucking wallet and stuff and keys in the no, bar? No, you don't. You don't. That's that's what freaked me out. Chinese like I, guys like read the paper, smoke. They just hang out in there. They must have really strong squatting? thighs. Yeah, the squ- honestly, the squatting was the best thing ever. Like it opened up my hips. I I, I actually miss squatting toilets. Wow. You know that sometimes they stand they stand on big. our toilets. There's been loads of signs now. 
Like they've had to put signs up in big uh, tourist spots where Chinese go to say, don't stand on the toilet. Oh, they stand and shit into it? Yeah, because they don't want to sit on the toilet because they think it's disgusting. And they're kind of, I guess, in a way, they're right. But that, are a lot but of them I, dirty I mean, like that? Yeah, I've, I, we had some footage in... Uh, that, that, that one on the right there, that, that was... We did a, a, a scene in, in one of those that was quite... Yeah, there, there's some disgusting. And they have some that there's no barricade in between. Everybody's just shitting. Yeah, that's the majority of them. Oh my god! Dude. But who oh. gives a fuck? They don't oh, care. That looks like well, because eventually you realize who gives a fuck. But what if you lose? I just you just take you your shit. balance. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you just don't. Shh, you know? you're, you're, you just don't. Oh come on, that's just dude. dude that, I never saw that. That's I just shitting in urine. I can't even look at that, dude. Although I just I did. I did see one where there was maggots. The, the shit oh, had overflown god. and there was maggots in the toilet. Did you Did you go to another one? I went to another. I couldn't handle it. Did you smell it? Look at that. Is that a real bathroom? Which one? Yeah, I was in plenty of bathrooms like that. That's really? really? Yeah. That's horrible. They're stepping in shit. Do they walk around in sandals? They're stepping in shit? The hey, fuck? man. It, that's just... But it's getting better, you know? It's improving. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. You know? <laughs> this is the privilege. This is the Western privilege that you don't understand you've been living We in. just don't like walking in shit. That's but it. I do remember... Oh, I was they can just clean that up. That's not yeah. privilege. They can just clean it. Oh, well, give, uh, it's, funny, it's funny you should mention that because... When we were in the northeast of China, we did. I did a month where I actually worked in a restaurant that was like part of the series, and uh, we we did a scene in the disgusting toilet. We filmed it, and like three days later, it was completely clean, because we had permission to film in the town. So they obviously got wind of the fact that we had taken footage from this shitty toilet, wow. so they, it, it was cleaned up. Yes, yeah, so they can clean stuff. People oh, can they clean. absolutely can clean it if they think it's going to be on Western television. <laughs> they clean everything up. They do. Oh yeah, they don't like that actually. We didn't have our guy. Eventually, so there's like a government guy that watches you film all the time. But what happens is, eventually, he sees that your 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 motivation is is good. That you're not there to just make China look like shit. So then go. he he leaves you off. Yeah. So, but when he was with us, we could never film in a toilet. It was actually one of the things that they were really paranoid about. They don't want their shitty toilets being on Western TV. Okay. Yeah, some some places hate it when you film in the bathroom. Yeah, but I do. will <laughs> say, <laughs> but I will say, in China's defense, they have a lot of public toilets. So the fact that there's a lot of shitty toilets—well, you mean is, public holes in the ground? Yeah, but you, if you're fucking going for a jog, like for example, like you're jogging in Beijing, if your stomach turns, which can happen just from the food, it's like fuck. In New York, where do you go? Like it's hard to find a place to have a shit. In Our Beijing, buddy, there's always. A toilet within like 300 yards. He's right. Our buddy Nico, who's our intern here, he shit himself on a bus. He did. And if there had been some toilets <laughs> really? around, yes, he did. And yeah, if, there had if been you some had been toilets, in China, you would have been able to jump off and know that you were within 100 yards of a public <laughs> toilet. So wait, now do they have? Do the Western <laughs> hotels have like sit toilets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every I mean, most places uh, that are of any standards have sit toilets nowadays. Everyone in New York has in mastered. Part, I lived with a family for a year. They had sit toilets. Everyone in New York has mastered the art of walking into a restaurant and going, "Hey, I'm gonna sit right here. Where's your rest your mat, take a shit, grab your jacket, and go back yeah. out. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. You I find leave. that people have gotten a lot better with that, actually, in New York. I feel like New York has become a lot friendlier. Most places are just like, it's cool, take a shit. Oh, you find so? Yeah. I, uh, but yeah, I haven't had to do it much. I, I'm so fucking crazy about where I shit. Like, really? I'm out of my mind. Are you a, are you a, a, wipe, a, a wet wipe guy? When I can, I'm, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a literally wipe out my asshole until there's nothing on the paper maniac. Like, I, I, I shit. I got to be nude when I shit. But do you it's have crazy. A, do you, do, <laughs> are you shit It's very here? abrasive. If I have to, yeah. Wet wipes are better. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, from living in China, I've just been completely liberated. I will shit anywhere. Like, I shit, I I shit in the cellar toilet all the time. Do you really? Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know I think I've seen you popping out of there. I'm like, wow, this guy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't wow. give a fuck. That's wow. a tough toilet. Yeah. That is that's a, a tough that's a a toilet. Minus, that's an A-minus toilet in Beijing. I Dude, I've out. taken probably <laughs> three shits there since 1995. Wow. I don't shit there at all. Yeah. I, I, sh I, 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 have, I sh have taken three shits there in the last month. Have you wow. really? I shit there all the time. It must make you feel like and such I'm a And I'm like man. best friends with the African guy that looks after the village underground toilet. Oh, really? You shit there too? Every single time I do a show. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. He goes, he goes you are next and I tip Are on you me. next? Yeah, are you next? So do you, because he doesn't want to say to a comedian because he he's talking to his me. brother who's like, a warlord. You see, listen, no noise. <laughs> <laughs> he's always like, see, listen, no noise. When you are on, so much noise. Wow. <laughs> he always disses the other comic. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I guess he wants more money. I think he does too. Yeah, he never yeah. compliments me like that. He just asks me if I'm on next, and I throw him five. Yeah. You must. You give him five? Yeah. Well, I give him two, but I shit there so much. Like I'll I give him two. I, I give him a lot of money. <laughs> no, yeah, I think he's probably give. I only piss there. Oh, you only piss now. I mean, I sh I I definitely give him at least ten dollars a week because I, I I'm in there a lot. You, you are. must feel like such a man that you have that ability to just shit anywhere. 
I don't feel like such a man. I just I have loose. I, I, I shit a lot. So Do you have bowel problems or not? No, but it, before a gig, I will always have to shit. You know what? I got to fucking empty out too before a big gig. That, everybody has that. It's a the nice best one. laxative in the that world. Billy Connolly said it on stage. Like it, the comedy just makes you have to shit. It's just nerves. Sometimes it, you ever it gets find, the Perry Stylus going. Do you find a relationship between how big and nasty of a shit and how good the show goes? Like if it's a really big shit, it's a better show. No, but what I do find is if you get one of those, is this uncomfortable for you, Jim? I just uh, sorry. no. Oh, he it, loves uh, it. What I do. <laughs> I no, I just, you I had a face, you had a face not, and I thought, oh, maybe. you out? No, I could drink cocoa talking about this. <laughs> 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 I find if uh, if I have one of those nice, like, just flow and there's no cutoff, you right. know, just that I feel better when I walk out. But by the time I'm on stage, I've forgotten. But when I have a horrible one that, like, has left me feeling a bit yeah. uh, abused. Unfulfilled, yeah. Yes, you're a not, bit sort of, like, a tender. You're unfocused. I, I, when I'm walking out, I think, oh, fuck, I'm going to be thinking about this on stage but actually it disappears yeah the adrenaline yeah. really like I've had I've had to puke right before I walked in yeah the adrenaline most not always most times I've had moments on stage where I'm like I think I'm gonna vomit but most times the adrenaline shoots through and it gets you through that hour I've been Absolutely. Time I was uh, I was with you on the road for one of your gigs because I was helping you out oh Kenny god that's, that was in uh, Harrisburg Pennsylvania that's where it was yeah. yes 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 and I remember because I had to give you your light and make sure your camera was on and all this stuff get the merch set up but Something we ate there or something gave me a diarrhea problem and I ended up like, you know, making sure your camera was set up. You go on stage and I didn't want to tell you. And so as soon as you're on stage and doing your thing, I ran to the bathroom and I was sitting there and I swear to God, I just got my last wife in, wipe in and buttoned up my pants and ran out in time to put the light up the wow. entire set. I was wow. on the toilet. You shat the whole time. Whole time. Good a boy. headlining I set? Like yeah. a headlining. No, it was an hour. I felt wow. I felt much better after. Cramping? While I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I right mean, if before, you're in there for that long. Right before like, Oh my god. I was like, oh, this is gonna be really toilet. bad. And I'm like, Jim, wow. get 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 on stage. Get on stage, Jim. Get on stage. And then ran. It is weird. I've been physically ill uh at a gig or had a bad cold or a fever, and I walk on stage and I feel completely fine for that hour that I'm up there. And then get off stage, and then it, and then whatever comes I was feeling, back. Comes That's back. adrenaline, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll get you through anything. It does. It does help when you're, especially though, when you're feeling queasy or you're gonna fucking puke or you just don't, Ugh. you know. It's the worst. It's the worst. I've only once in my my entire comedy career did I have to just walk off stage. I was so ill. I'd come back from Thailand and whatever I picked up, it was horrific. Were you sick or did you eat bad, something bad? No, no, I was just really, really sick, and I tried to do the show, and I just, I literally had to walk off. And so, what do you do? Did you just tell him, I'm sorry, I'm sick. I, I gotta was like, go, sorry, guys, just... I can't, I can't. I just you feel can't. like you're gonna shit. Yourself? I felt terrible, but. I just find I, 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 I was late to get on stage because I was dropping and then they were like, you know, there's Bishop, I heard the applause site and then Isn't I, that do you ever do you fear that when you're sitting on the toilet before you go on stage that they're gonna call you up early? Do you ever have that fear? I have I a fear have when, fear when fear. I'm pissing, but I'm also like I've had it happen so many times. It happened in Australia. My manager panicked, and it's like she's like, "No, fuck the other comic. They got to stand there and eat it because I'm not walking out." <laughs> yeah. So they have to just realize they fucked up. And yeah. then you also have, it's well, a you're, funny you're, opening when you can walk out and they know that something fucking went wrong. Right. They, I never mind. I try not to have it happen, but if it happens, no, my it fear would be dribble. You know, like yeah. like uh, like oh, I, yeah. I get no, I, I'm rushing, so I put it in too early, and then I got dribble. Oh my fear! That's my down? dream. That's my first ten minutes. If I piss myself, <laughs> <laughs> do you look down? Do you look down while you're on stage? Just double check while no, you're on I stage. No, I look down be before like, I get yeah. on. Yeah, I've done that yeah. before on stage. Going, did I? Oh, no, I'm good. No dribble. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you wouldn't mind a little bit of dribble on your pants. You wouldn't mind t letting the audience know that. Baby boy had an accident. No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I wouldn't care about it. I'm, I'm not circumcised, so I have to always a little bit extra attention to the dribble. Oh, you're unclipped. As we I'm say. unclipped. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I was too. So when are you going back? <laughs> why, why, do you, why do you wish this? I was uncircumcised because I think sex would feel better. I think you did retain sensitivity. Yeah, I, I have no comparison, but I, I, I do believe that that is the case. It's probably the case. Um, so now you're in the States. How long are you staying here for? For oh, good? I, well, I'm going to Australia on, on Sunday, but that's just for six weeks. I, I mean, I'm here six for Six weeks? You're going, you, you really fucking travel. So you don't get attached to things fast, or you do? I have the, pra the Buddhist practice of non-attachment. No, no, I've just been traveling for quite a while now, so I'm just used to it. I mean, I guess eventually I'll settle down, but, you know, I'm a single guy. You know, we've entered into the we've entered into the midlife, you know, midlife single yeah. freedom. How old zone. are you? I'm 49. I'm 42, but okay. it's like you're single, you're free, you got to take advantage. Yeah, go out as much as you can. I guess you're single, you're free, you got money now. It's like you enjoy. You enjoy should be it. enjoying it, right? Just enjoy. But anyway, I'm going to Australia for six weeks, but I am based here for the time being. But I haven't completely let go of Ireland. It's just a, for me right now. My full time American life is temporary. Uh, what happens long term is up in the air. When you are talking to people after the shows, uh, what type of women do you avoid now that you used to go? Yeah, let's let's go. 
So, so what type are you of saying women? like what 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 kind? What, you're saying you're what? a single guy now. You're traveling. You're free. So you meet girls when you're on the road. What kind of women do you avoid now that you would have hung out with before? Oh, I don't know. I I I think I'm still pretty open. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like I I avoid the same women I used to. You know, women I don't find attractive. Women that are annoying. Women that are too drunk. I just avoid them. You know, you know it, but there's no there's no great difference. I mean, I have to be honest, man. Like I'm pretty well known in Ireland, but being in America gigging, uh, our American girls are are. It's easy to meet women here. I've been shocked, actually. Really? Yeah. There's a huge difference. At how well, easy it is to hook up with women. Yeah. Really. Yeah, American women are just like they're definitely that little bit more. Well, open. you look like Des Bishop. It's probably a lot different than when you look like Jim Norton. There's probably a different <laughs> level of ease. Yeah. Jim, have you found that American girls are very easy to hook up with? You know, Sam, I've not had that experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny how that works. Yeah, it really. Well, is. anyway, I've just I, it's been fun. <laughs> GQ or Sluggo the Turtle do, Boy? Who do do you know what I have? Do you know what I have encountered? I've met a number of women who have never dealt with uh, with an uncut penis. You know, so I've had to I've had to actually instruct. Them about the fact that you can't pull back as much as you're used to because Oof. there's a it's connected. Oh, they pull back. Oh, they pull back too far, and it's like whoa, and they're like oh shit, what? And I'm like yeah, it's just you know, it's like you don't need lube because you got the skin, but you, you can't pull back too far because it's That's connected. Right. There's so much going on. You got to get rid of the complication. You think so? No, yeah. he was circumcised. It's Jewish propaganda, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I, he was I, circumcised I, as a young I, adult. Oh, were I was you? Nine, yeah, but I had I had my own issues. But I was nineteen when I got circumcised. Yeah, really. Yeah. The issues yeah. were complications. What was yes, he's what, an ass. What, That's what, the issue. What, what, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a different thing. I didn't realize what they were doing. I, I, I assume you've talked about the issues many times. So it's yeah, going right, oh, Grant, it. sorry. No, Can you just tell me quickly so yeah, yeah, I know? Yeah. Well, you do, you would know. These guys don't understand. But uh, my, you know, the opening in the force too tight. Too tight. Oh, yep. It's called famosis. Oh, it's called. That's what the doctor said. Dr. I didn't Steve know about that, that part of the story. Bottomless phimosis. Phimosis. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, so the uh, opening suit tight, so you can't peel it. Oh back, yeah, I've know. heard about that. Actually. Right, 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 right. I only had that when I had thrush. What's thrush? Uh, a yeast infection. Male, uh, male, male yeast infection. Oof. How'd you How'd you know you had that? It starts to hurt. It just yeah, it's just like and it tightens. The, yeah. the skin tightens. Couldn't and pull then your you, foreskin back. Wait, the, your the, foreskin tightens because you had a yeast infection? Yeah, it's basically like having chap lips. Except so you get dick. a little cracking when you get erect. Oof. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get know, rid of it. Get rid of it. Men's oh. sexual health with Jim and Sam. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So wait a minute. How, how do you get a yeast infection as a guy? It, it, it's a thing. You can get it. Yeah, you can get it if you're on like antibiotics or you can pick it up off a lady. There, they, <laughs> Candida is the official term. Wow. Candi oh, candida. what a great song by oh, Tony oh, Orlando if you want candi to. <laughs> can candida or Candida. Yeah, Candida. That's it. Candida, yeah. So uh, anyway, I, 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 I had a run of it for a while, but... You know, I just have you been to Australia before? Can I just talk about how why I ended up not being engaged? <laughs> sure. I, I, I think I take it back. Yeah. I'd rather talk about that than Candida. <laughs> what about what about women in Australia? Have you found it easy to meet women in Australia too? Yeah, not bad, not bad, but not, not as much as America. Hmm. I, I've met, I've met some a lot wonderful. Of there's in America. actually a woman in Australia right now that I would marry if if she wasn't so far away. But why don't you uh, bring her here? Oh, she doesn't want to emigrate. I go, oh, well, that's the problem. I thought living. everybody wanted to come to America. Yeah, you think that, yeah. but uh, you, you'll find the percentage has dropped a lot in the last 13 months. <laughs> <laughs> where, uh, where in Australia? She uh, lives in Sydney, but she's from Melbourne. So will you spend the whole time with her there? No, no, no. I, I'll see her some of the time. Okay. Definitely. Are you hitting the comedy clubs? Or are you doing theaters? No, I'm doing the festival. I'm doing Brisbane Comedy Festival. Then I'm doing Melbourne Comedy Festival, Sydney Comedy Festival, and then I finish up in Perth, and then I come back. Okay. And then I'm doing Comedy Cell of Vegas. Oh, you know that yeah, oh, the, the, the Comedy new. Cellar has opened. In, it's a Wednesday night headline show, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I guess, of just regular like Comedy Cellar like shows. Yeah, showcase spots. shows. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty cool. I don't, I'm going to guess they're doing two a night on the weekends. I don't know. Uh, it's at the Rio, I think, right? Yeah, at the Rio. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know that much about it other than I'm doing it uh, the, the weekend after I get back. Oh, so. that's cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I, I, I was hoping me and Sam maybe should go out there one time. I would like to broadcast on. Oh the way yeah, to you LA. should definitely do that. Yeah. And do, I mean, do a night there. I mean, hopefully it works out. I hope so, too. And then too. take a romantic drive through the desert? Yeah. I don't see that. Sure. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I want to take like a fucking, uh, like, a, like a Pesci and, uh, and De Niro one in Casino. Remember they met in the desert? Oh, I remember. I'd love to have that discussion. A lot of holes You Jew motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> so, Pesci was so funny in that. <laughs> you go over my head, Ace. <laughs> so great.